It's February 2007. Series 3 of Doctor Who is in production, and Series 4 is in early development. Freema Adjaman is leaving, and a new companion is about to take her place. I'm not sure about the first episode of Series 4 either, because that's introducing the Doctor's new companion. I like the name Penny. Do you like Penny? Wait, Penny? Rose Martha Penny. Penny, smart, sassy, mid-thirties, posh mum, awful boyfriend, passing the TARDIS in the rain. Not Donna, Penny. A companion that never was. Between February 2007 and April 2008, showrunner Russell T Davies kept an email correspondence with Benjamin Cook, writer and journalist for Doctor Who magazine. These emails would eventually be turned into a book titled The Writer's Tale. Using this as our primary source, we can see the creation and erasure of Penny in real time. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Who is Penny? Russell's early thoughts on Penny was that she was to be a bit older than Martha in her mid-30s. He wanted her to be sassier and smarter. He even notes Donna as the blueprint for this character. At the Radio Times covers party, Jane Tranter, the BBC's controller of fiction, said to me, can't we bring back Donna for a few episodes? Hmm, no. They wanted Penny to be a match for the Doctor, potentially a journalist like Sarah Jane. A little bit clumsy, northern possibly. Annie Pryor threw out some names like Sarah Parrish and Sheridan Smith, who played 8th Doctor companion Lucy Miller, for the audio range at Big Finish. Thinking about her family, he thought about having a mum who's quite posh, using the term lottery winner posh to kind of set the vibe. He also sparks the idea of a funny old grandfather. Nice old bloke. Gentle, sweet, a telescope in his shed. He's always been the stargazer. He's the one who waves Penny off, tears in his eyes. You could already see the start of the elements that were moved onto Donna. Donna's mother shares many of those traits, and the funny old grandfather is clearly Wilf, even describing the final moments of Partners in Crime where he is waving off the Doctor and Donna as they go off to explore the universe. And on the 26th of February, Russell had decided on a name, Penny Carter, a true proper name for a Russell T Davies companion. So, how did the Doctor and Penny meet? The character of Penny only existed for a few weeks, so the first episode was nowhere near a draft. Instead, it was just a bunch of ideas, some more solid, some in flux. Based on these notes, I've put together a rough storyline. Just a warning, this is most likely nothing like how the final episode would have turned out. We start with Penny, getting a surprise party ready for her boyfriend Gary. We see Gary take the keys out of his car and walk towards the door. Penny is trying to keep everyone quiet, reminding them all that he thinks she's out of town. The party goers hear him approach and turn the lights off. He unlocks the door and they jump up and yell, surprise! Behind him is another woman. Clearly, he is cheating on her. Penny leaves the party, embarrassed and heartbroken. She's talking on the phone to a friend. Why can't I meet the right man? As she passes an old police box. The next day, Penny is driving with her mother Moira and they reach a T-junction. After some contemplation, she decides to turn left. But by making that decision, she has driven herself into danger. A giant dome descends over the suburb. The police and army surround the dome, but they cannot enter. They are trapped. There is an unknown danger within the dome, but luckily for them, a certain Time Lord is stuck in there too. Penny bumps into the Doctor and they instantly click. There's maybe even a romantic spark between the two. An alien has placed the structure to start a hunt and hunts the suburban residents down one by one. The Doctor and Penny somehow stop the menace and sends it on its way. Penny is offered a trip into the stars and she says yes. But she has one request, to see her grandfather wave her off. 
The Doctor and Penny, Travellers of the Universe. And credits. In early March, Russell T Davies and Jane Tranter continue to discuss the character of Penny. Jane mentioned she recently had a meeting with Catherine Tate. It was a general meeting discussing future projects at the BBC. But according to Jane, Catherine spent the majority of the meeting talking about how much fun she had on Doctor Who, working with David and the crew. Jane believed that she might be convinced to do a full series. It was difficult to see if this would even be an option. Catherine was very busy, having worked in four films in 2006 alone, or while starring in The Catherine Tate Show. She was very much in demand, and even the idea of her appearing in the series 4 finale seemed like a pipe dream. Therefore, Penny's story continued. Russell even had an actor in mind to take over. In the lift at Broadcasting House yesterday, maybe you heard me turn to Julie and say, wouldn't be a brilliant Penny? Who that actor was, we'll probably never know. Since the character was only an outline, auditions hadn't started yet. So the actor they had in mind might have even just turned it down. Or someone else could have gotten the part. So releasing the name may not be the best thing. This isn't an isolated event in Doctor Who's history. For example, during John Pertwee's final season, when casting the role of Sarah Jane Smith, Elizabeth Sladen wasn't the first to be cast in the role. Originally, April Walker was contracted to play the role, but it was quickly discovered that she didn't have chemistry with John Pertwee. So her contract was paid in full and was replaced with Elizabeth Sladen. Producer Barry Letts and Liz Sladen never revealed her name, and it wasn't until they had both passed that the name was found in some old documents. Who knows, maybe a similar situation will happen with our Penny. But as we all know, Penny was not meant to be. On Tuesday, the 13th of March, Julie Gardner had a lunch with Catherine Tate, who apparently screamed in excitement and started planning her move to Cardiff. Surely Catherine's agent is going to rugby tackle her. Imagine a whole season of Tennant and Tate. It's a casting director's dream. Can't be true, can't be. But by Monday, the 19th of March, Catherine Tate said yes. She said, when people say my jaw hit the floor, I know what they mean. I made my decision as soon as they suggested it. It just took a while to work out the logistics. Now that Catherine Tate was locked in, the series changed. Penny was removed and the first episode changed almost entirely. Many elements remained, such as the base for Turn Left. Penny Carter even made it to our screen in Partners in Crime. She was a completely different character and completely different actor, but I think it's nice that Penny got to live on in some way. But there are some omissions that Russell was quite happy about in hindsight. I went and saw the Simpsons movie this afternoon. Not bad, not brilliant. And thank God I dropped that original 4.1 plot, the inverted bowl over the estate plot, because that's what happens to Springfield. On the 5th of April, 2008, the debut story of Series 4, Partners in Crime, aired in the UK. Donna Noble was back, and this time she knew where she wanted to go. About two and a half miles that way. <laughs> to say goodbye to her granddad. He gets to wave her off with a tear in his eye, as she knows she's about to set off on a trip of a lifetime. A beautiful moment that was almost Penny's. On the 24th of March, 2007, Russell was walking down Oxford Street when someone called out his name. It was the actor they had in mind to play Penny. He thought of how the team loved her and how he knew that her dates were free to be in it. And when he looked at her, he saw Penny, the woman she never got to play, the companion that never was. You must be the only other person in the whole world who will miss Penny. I still believe that Penny Carter is walking past that TARDIS, but now she walks on and never meets the Doctor. Shall we light a candle for Penny? You light a candle. I'll light a cigarette. Thanks for watching this video. If you would like to support me on Patreon, I'd be super thankful. If not, a like, a comment or subscribe can go a long way. If you haven't purchased or borrowed a copy of The Writer's Tale, I recommend it wholeheartedly. It is such a fascinating inside look into the creation of our beloved show. 
Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Josh Nairs YouTube channel. How could I possibly forget that?